I'm Dr. Sam Winter. I've been practicing dentistry for many years in Canada. Uh, for the last several decades in Vancouver. I have my own practice, I have a general practice. We have a hygienist and I see all kinds of people and do almost all kinds of, all the procedures necessary except for really difficult surgeries and I don't do braces and I don't do bad gums. And that's the biggest point what I'm here today to, is to make sure you don't get bad gums. And Maxima has some questions for me and uh, we're going to talk about how to make sure you stay as healthy as you can without using a dentist. Perfect, thank you. Um, can you please explain to us how we should maintain our oral hygiene? Well, probably growing up your mother always said, keep yourself clean. Well, that goes for your mouth triple. And the trick is to brush and floss. Now, how many times a day should you brush? Some people brush after every time they put something in their mouth. That's a little excessive. So the bottom line is, you have to brush at least once every 24 hours, and that once should take you about two minutes. And most people say, what? I only brush for 20 seconds. Well, two minutes, and that will maintain your health. And when people look at me and say, what do you mean two minutes? Again, I say, I'm not asking you to go to the gym for two hours in the comfort of your own home, it doesn't even have to be your bathroom, just brush your teeth for two minutes. Look at a watch, because it seems like forever. There's nothing more boring than brushing your teeth. But brush and floss at least once every 24 hours. And if you're eating something sticky or something with a lot of sugar, if your teeth were clean before you started, if you run your tongue over your teeth, you will feel like this little fuzzy, furry, film on your teeth. Whenever you feel that, if you get in the habit of checking, you're going to want to brush your teeth. So brush as often as you'd like. Don't scrub till your gums bleed or till it hurts. Just brush and brush at the gum line. You've got to get that brush underneath the gums just a little bit where the teeth grow out of the gums. That's the important part to brush. Not on the top where you chew. That's important too, but that part will clean itself. But right at the gum line where your teeth grow out of the gums, that's got to be brushed and at least once every 24 hours. And whether you use toothpaste or not, it's better to use toothpaste, but I've run into people that say they can't stand having a mouthful of foam from the toothpaste. Well, there's two things. If you really can't stand toothpaste, don't use toothpaste. The brush does 90% of the work. The toothpaste just adds a little bit of detergent, adds a few other chemicals that help break down uh, tartar or remove stains but mostly it's the brush and if if you don't like to have foam in your mouth just smear a little toothpaste on your brush a smear is all you need on TV they show you putting a piece on about this big well that's the marketing department that wants you to use lots of toothpaste on your brush so you go out and buy some more otherwise your tube will last you all year and they're not going to be able to afford big holidays <laughs> is uh, mouthwash part of the oral hygiene? That's a really tough question because mouthwash doesn't do much, but it does a little. Uh, if you use mouthwash after you brush, some mouthwashes have uh, sort of systems in them like detergent, which helps to lift particles that are already loose away and so they come out when you, when you rinse. Uh, some mouthwashes kill bacteria, but this only reduces the number and load of bacteria in your mouth for if you're lucky, two hours. Now there are some that say 12 hour fresh. Well, maybe a little bit, but they are the only ones who are doing the testing and they claim that, I'm not saying it doesn't, but it's not significant, in my opinion. And, yeah. What causes tooth loss? The biggest cause, cause of tooth loss is not decay. And it's not accidents, it's gum disease. And gum disease is totally preventable in most people. There's a small percentage of people, one or two percent, it's like arthritis. It just attacks them no matter what they do. And with, a du with diligent cleaning and flossing and brushing and, and gum specialists, they can keep their teeth an extra years, few years. I didn't want to say decades, but perhaps decades. Uh, but most people, the vast majority of people, 98% of people, if they brush, floss, and get their teeth cleaned, at the dentist uh, so that the tartar is removed, 
uh, at least when you feel that it's built up, if you can't, with, the, with your tongue along the back of your teeth, if you can't feel a separate teeth, if the teeth feel like they've all been joined together, then you've got so much tartar there that it's a problem. And so that's got to be scraped off. That, but if you floss every day and brush every day, that's less likely to build up. But it's a function of your saliva chemistry. And I'm not going to give you a chemistry lesson, but very, very quickly, the saliva in the glands is under pressure and that pressure keeps carbon dioxide dissolved in the saliva which makes the saliva slightly acidic which helps maintain minerals and as soon as the saliva comes into your mouth the carbon dioxide bubbles out the acid level drops it can't keep the minerals dissolved in your in a, in a liquid anymore and those minerals precipitate out deposit themselves on your teeth or on your dentures or appliances anything you've got in your mouth that's solid will collect uh, mineral deposits, which is mostly a calcium carbonate, the same things that coral is made of and, and seashells. So, if you, back to what tartar is. Tartar, it's like coral, it's made up of tiny, tiny pores. It's an apartment house for bacteria. These bacteria live in there, they're protected, and they, uh, they live on what you live on, the sugars and the uh, other foods, carbohydrates mostly, not so much protein. And the waste products from their metabolism, from the sugars that these bacteria eat, then produce toxins that destroy, inflame and infect your gums, which then transfers down and inflames and infects the bone around the roots of your teeth. And you may have heard the term long in the tooth for somebody who's old. It's because it used to be thought inevitable that teeth, gums would, and bone would shrink back, the roots would become exposed, and a lot of, there. If you don't take care of your teeth, by the time you're in your 40s, you will have lost half the bone around the roots of your teeth. So that half the root is sticking out into your mouth. If you've got really swollen, bleeding gums, they will be swollen up. You won't even see the fact that there's no bone around the roots. But once they're healthy, all this shrinks down and you can see the long teeth so much, with a lot of root exposed. And so the major cause of tooth loss is gum disease, periodontal disease. and in its various forms, it affects almost everybody. In its most severe form, it hardly affects more than three, two to three or four percent of the population. So you have the full gamut. You have gingivitis, which is a very a surface inflammation of the gums, and so that the gums look red and bleed easily. And this is just a matter of brushing. If you brush your teeth, it will it'll go away within two or three days. If you don't brush, it'll progress into periodontal disease which will affect the bone around the roots and your teeth will loosen and fall out after they give you a lot of misery. <laughs> and you know, it takes years. It also leads to heart disease. It's been shown that people who have chronic gum disease, so you've got all these toxins from the bacteria and this chronic infection in your gums getting into your bloodstream and it affects blood vessels in your heart. And after decades, so by the time you're in your 50s or 60s, if you've had bad gums for years and years, you will be more likely to have heart disease. And this has been proven.